Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. We are episode 183. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. And as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. My husband Brian is over here on the side watching for your questions. He'll pop those up on the screen if you have any during the live. And tonight we're going to be making a card and a 3D. We're doing easy tonight. This is um, some great projects for beginner crafters. We're going to be using, oh, there's only five days left of celebration, so we're going to use the Oso oh Ombre paper and the A Touch of Ink stamp set. So, quick sneak peek. This is the treat holder we're going to be making. It is an alternative diaper fold treat pouch, and then a variation of this clean and simple card. I'm going to show you. I've made three of these. We'll make a fourth one together. I'll show you some tips and tricks using the Stamparatus. Let me say hello to you as you're rolling in. I see Amy and I see you're getting shout outs, Brian. Um, hi, Sherry, Nancy. Oh my gosh, we did have a glorious day here in North Fulton, Nancy. It went up to, what was it, 72 today? 72 and sunny here in the Atlanta area. Sue, Pam, hello, hi Sally, Kathy, Phyllis, Joanne, welcome. We will be doing Prize Patrol, but you hang on till the end for that. Yay, Cindy, I'm glad you got, you loved your happy mail. My team participated in a challenge, so those that completed the challenge are starting to receive their happy mail from me. Hi Ginger, hi Myrtle. Tara, oh, I can't keep up. Oh, my brother is here. Gregor's is in the house. I'm sure my dad is here too, Papa Pixie. They're both watching from Facebook. If you're new to my lives, both my dad and my brother usually join every week. So say hello to Greg and John. We call him Papa Pixie. Um, hi, Hippie Kansas Girl, Wendy. Hi, Stephanie. I'm looking. I see Thumbnail Ranch. There we go. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. All right. A couple of housekeeping items. Uh, my host code. I cannot believe we are at the end of February, but my host code for this month is M2WPBZUT. Please use that host code on orders under $150. If your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code because you'll earn stamp rewards and we'll get to spend those on yourself. My free gift for orders of $75 or more this month is the Blackberry Bliss Striped Ribbon. Those free gifts will ship out the middle of next month to those who qualified. And as I mentioned, Celebration is coming to an end on Sunday. There are three ways to earn free stuff during Celebration. I know many of you have taken advantage of it, but those of you that want to get a few last minute things, Orders of $50 or orders of $100 earn free items. And in the celebration brochure, there are seven different items at the $50 purchase level and two items at the $100 purchase level. Lots of great papers and stamp sets. Orders of $300 or more if you are a big shopper or you get some friends together for an order. Kathy, that's a good question. Shoot me an email about that. Um, the retired list... Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> I don't want to confuse people with the retired list. Um, I think it's sometime in March. Um, so orders of $300 or more will um, earn the Punch Party stamp set. And the best deal of them all is to purchase the starter kit during celebration for $99 plus taxes, but free shipping. You get to choose up to $125 in product. And on top of that, you will receive five packs of six by six paper. I'm trying not to cover my mic here. It's 200 sheets of our Color Families Designer Series paper. That is exclusive to the new upcoming annual catalog. The value of those five packs of paper in total is $57.50. So for $99, you get $182.50 worth of goodies. It's a great deal that ends on Sunday, I think at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, the great thing about purchasing the starter kit, you do not have to be a demonstrator and teach or sell. You can just be a happy shopper enjoying the discount and the demonstrator perks that come along with it. So it's a great deal. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made. 
If you want to read about my top 10 reasons, be sure to visit thepaperpixie.com slash top 10, and that will take you to my top 10 reasons why I think it's the best decision ever. So I think, is there anything else? If you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't ordered for me in a while, you can request free catalogs for me at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. You can select any of the current catalogs, all or one or just two of them, uh, but you, you can just fill out your information there and I'll get those in the mail to you. And I think the last thing, I put this out here a couple weeks ago, but my daughter is selling Girl Scout cookies um, sales through March 12th. So if you don't already have a Girl Scout in your area, feel free to check out Lily's website. Okay, I think that is it. I'm gonna flip my camera. I can't remember if there was anything else I wanted to talk about. Let's jump into the 3D project. I'm excited about the um, alternative take on the diaper fold. I think this is the one I showed you. I've got paper here in the way. Uh, so this is, I love diaper folds and I'm realizing again, I need to have a checklist. I forgot to do the white balance and I have a question. Good question, Teresa. I do not know when the clearance rack will be updated, but great question. I will let you know when it is, <laughs> or if I get any hints to when it will. I think that looks like better coloring. All right, so what I love about these diaper fold pouches or treat holders is the fact that it uses a six by six. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Lily's art. I knew I was forgetting something. So my daughter who just turned eight last week, she had a Girl Scout meeting for World Thinking Day. Their country was Japan. So she colored in this Maneki Neko. I know I'm totally probably butchering how to say that, but she named it and wrote the name in Japanese, Kawaii Kitty. <laughs> I have no clue if that's actually what, if that actually spells Kawaii Kitty, but we had fun. She did, um, the Girl Scouts had a Zoom virtual meeting and they did some taste testing and all kinds of fun stuff. Oh, I should mention, this was colored with stamp and write markers. She has commandeered my stamp and write markers, so I'm ordering her her own set. <laughs> and then Nolan, he chose to share with you his Lego. And if Papa Pixie is watching, this is exactly what Papa Pixie just gave him. Um, demonstrators cannot marry the pre-order for demonstrators for that paper was back in December, but it will be available in the annual catalog launching. I think it's May 3rd or May 4th. Um, that paper will be available for purchase for everybody in the new annual catalog. So yeah, Papa Pixie sent, um, the kids some little love gifts and, uh, Nolan, <laughs> we we shared with him last night that he was getting it and he just was positively vibrating and couldn't wait to put it together so that's what he did this morning and I'm seeing a piece of watermelon sitting on the back of the boat <laughs> anyways he loves his Legos all right so the diaper fold I love this project for using up designer series paper this works best with a designer series paper that doesn't have a directional pattern because you will be folding things in a diagonal way. There's a number of different ways that you can do this, but I thought I'd just do a little alternative. It's got a magnetic closure and inside I've got a Ghirardelli square. The Ghirardellis with filling fit in here, but it's a pretty snug fit. So I kind of recommend that you go with the Ghirardellis that don't have the filling because they're just a little bit thicker. But we've got this cute magnetic closure and this is just one of those projects you can have a whole bunch ready to go and the chocolate's not going to fall out anyway it's kind of a different thing um just giving you i know all of you have probably tried the diaper fold ghirardelli squares are sort of perfect for these so this is using that great oso ombre paper that is free with a $50 purchase now through Sunday, because this is a celebration product. But we've got Blackberry Bliss, Bermuda Bay, Rococo Rose, and Granny Apple Green are the patterns in this paper. And they all have an ombre effect. Um, either it has the little circles or it's a solid. So really pretty. We're also gonna use this paper for the card we'll make tonight as well. But let me show you how easy this is to make. I'm gonna apologize in advance. I'm using the double oval punch, which is currently <laughs> unorderable. So if you don't already have an oval punch, um, 
Circle punches will work for this. Any of our oval or circle dies will work. If you already have the oval punch, great. It'll work um, for this project. I just thought that oval was a really good contrast with sort of this diagonal slash rectangular shape. It's kind of a horizontal shape there. So I'm going to grab a sheet of Bermuda Bay. We're going to have the circles be on the outside. And the first thing we're, we're going to do is I'm going to fold. I'm trying to figure out, I want this to be the corner that folds down when we fold backwards for the front. So you want to put this in sort of a diamond pattern and then I'm just going to fold corner to corner. A little bit of origami, but then a little bit of pixify, pixification. This is not looking like the right color. It's Bermuda Bay, but it's turning up a little green on the camera. Then just come in and use your bone folder. And I've got a trick here, either using your grid paper or my favorite, we're going to use the Simply Score. And I'm going to show you how to line this up. As many of you have probably seen, I take a Sharpie and draw a Sharpie line right down the middle. That sort of helps me eyeball... Um, from one end of the six inch score line to the other. I'm going to flip this so that we got our flat edge up towards the top. You can do a similar thing with the grid paper. This is going to help you when you fold the paper that we kind of have everything uniform and squared up properly. I'm lining up this point at that little six inch mark. It doesn't have to be at six inches, but that's just the easiest to put a Sharpie marker or a Sharpie line on here. I'm going to take this corner and fold it back up to right at the six inch mark at the top. So that's just making sure that this fold is straight and parallel to this fold. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. This is where it gets a little bit different, but this is where we're going to get that fold over to keep the chocolate sort of in the pocket. Okay. So while I'm doing this, I'm just going to come in and burnish. I'm going to burnish this one the other way because technically this is going to be our flap that will ultimately fold down. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it over here. Okay. This is our back flap. We sort of decided that I'm going to make a score line at two and three eighths. That is just a quarter of an inch up from this horizontal or this vertical score line. So two and three eighths, I kind of start it in the track and then bring it down to the paper. That's going to give us that little quarter of an inch that's going to fold over and compensate for the chocolate in the pocket. Okay. So we don't need the simply scored anymore. We just kind of use that as a tool. You don't have to do that additional score line, but I like the structure that it gives the top of this pocket. Okay, so let's go ahead. I burnished on that first one, I think, and then on the second one. So that part is done. We're going to leave that alone. This is our top flap. Okay, so with this folded up again, this is going to be our front. It just has the single score line. I am going to take this corner and right where this score line ends, we're going to fold this and have this edge line up right underneath, sort of, I'll, I'll um, open this in a second and show you. We're keeping this um, vertical, sorry, I'm mixing these up, this horizontal, but lining up that edge to this score line, like so. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. And then burn see how different the color looks? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. It's not consistent. Weird green. <laughs> so we've kind of got it like this. Okay. I know many of you have done this many times before. This part's going to fold down. Normally we'd have a diaper fold like so, and then the chocolate would go in there, but I wanted to keep the chocolate secure. So let's bring in some glue dots. These are going to be our, my favorite here. And I think we'll see if we run out. <laughs> I'm going to do one behind each point. Okay, so we're going to hold those in place. You don't really need those to be held. And then I'm going to put one here. It looks totally green. <laughs> and then I'm going to pick one. Whoops, I picked it up. Now I'm not going to fold this down quite yet. I'm going to bring in magnets. So um, I am excited to share and I shared it last week. I'm an affiliate for Total Element. That's where I get my magnets from. I love them. I've always recommended them to you. If you shop at thepaperpixie.com slash total element and use 
coupon code PAPERPIXIE, you'll get 10% off. I've got three different magnets on my favorites page at the paperpixie.com of the magnets that I love. These are the smallest of the three, and I'm going to pick up a glue dot with one of the magnets, and I'm going to place that just beneath those two flaps that we folded over, because we're going to actually hide this. And then I'm going to fold, now remember we put the glue dot here, I'm going to fold that down. Okay, so that's kind of keeping that magnet there in place. You could have put another glue dot over the magnet, but it's going to stay put there. I'm going to grab a chocolate. Now this is one with filling, so you see, you'll see how it's a bit of a tight fit. And I'm going to push that almost all the way down, or as far down as I can that will allow this flap to then fold over. But how cute is that with our designer series paper and you get those two different colors, the front and the back, okay? So while I have this closed, I'm gonna drop the other magnet over the top because I wanna know where the positive and negative is, okay? So now that I know that that's how the magnet needs to line up, I am gonna gently pick up this magnet and I'm putting the glue dot, remembering where that, where it lined up. Now make sure we close this and then you can drop it on there again and it's gonna stick now with the glue dot. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna grab one more glue dot because I want this to really stay put. I'm just gonna pick it up. I've got the glue dot here, okay? Got to grab my dimensionals or I'm not seeing them. I'm gonna grab a trio of dimensionals and I'm gonna just place those sort of around the magnet. That's what we're gonna stick our sentiment to. Okay, so the magnets are gonna to be totally hidden on this. Now let's do a little bit of stamping. I've got a scrap piece of basic white and I'm gonna stamp in Bermuda Bay the sentiment from this beautiful stamp set. This is also a celebration stamp set. This is one of the $100 level items, but I love how versatile this set is. We've got sentiments, best wishes, thank you so much, hope, love, thinking of you, and hello friend. This is at 65%, so the images are actually much larger than they appear on the front. And I'll show you some more versatility with the cards that I'm gonna share with you tonight. So I'm just gonna stamp the sentiment in Bermuda Bay. Thank you so much. Grabbing the double oval punch again, right now it's not orderable, but I know it'll be on your must have list if you don't already have it. I like to save this. I'm gonna show you a trick really quickly while I've got the stamp set out because I know you're gonna make multiples of this. So. Don't waste this piece, or you could also cut a strip that's narrow enough that you're not also punching the oval or the scalloped oval. I'm gonna stamp again right in the center of this. And I'm gonna show you a trick with your, take your pick tool. So start to feed that into your punch. Grab the putty end of your take your pick tool, and then you can move that around where you want it. And then you haven't wasted that extra piece that popped out. So now you've got two sentiments you can work with. Now you gotta make two treat pouches, okay? <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna also punch, this one's easier to do without wasting cardstock, the scalloped oval from Bermuda Bay. As I'm making a racket here, grabbing liquid glue, putting that on the back of the whisper, ugh basic white piece. <laughs> I'm gonna get soap in my mouth saying whisper white too much. Okay, lining that up and now we can just place that right over those dimensionals and that, oh, I probably should take the backing off. <laughs> I'm like, it's sliding around a little bit too much. And that is gonna hide the magnet. You don't see the magnets at all. I love that. It's gonna kind of secure them in place. So there's that, but we gotta dress this up just a little bit. I'm gonna grab a medium-sized rhinestone and place that right underneath the sentiment. Now, if you don't have the take your pick tool, 
It is one of my favorite tools. I love picking up the adhesive backed with that putty end. You can also get refills for that. And then I'm gonna take, this is from the Snail Mail Twine Combo Pack. This is the Whisper White. Well, I guess it's called Whisper White. It changed, but anyways, I'm gonna do a double loop bow here. Kind of like a bunny ears bow. This for some reason helps me get the loops more in position than if I were to do it a different way. Yes, um, Alice, I understand that it is the same size as the, as the single oval punches we used to have. Good question. That's my understanding. The scallops look just slightly different, but it is the same size. So you can use that if you already have that in your stash. So I'm just doing kind of a tiny little bow here, and I'm going to share another tip with adhesive here. Normally I would use, I'm going to grab my ribbon scissors because that'll cut much better than with my snips. Normally I would use a glue dot here to attach the knot of the twine bow, but I have found that over time that sort of releases. So I like to use the fine tip glue pen. Now I have had this glue since we first came out with it. I haven't used it up yet, but I'm going to drop just a little drop off to the right side here. This is, uh, I think, the same as what our crystal effects used to be. My other trick here is to put your finger right up against that to get the pin lined up. Now watch, it won't work for me. Let me get, make sure the pin stays in there. So let me just show you, there's that tiny little drop and I'm gonna lay the knot right over that. It does take a little bit longer to dry, but I've found that that holds on to the twine much better. I'm gonna use my reverse tweezers here. You could use your take your pick tool as well. Just kind of pressing that into place, but I do need to set it off to the side so that um, it will stick down. But that is how quick and easy it is to make those diaper fold treat holders. The chocolate won't fall out of that one. I've seen some really cute alternatives. I hadn't seen one like this and was tickled to figure out. But you can't only just make one. So let me show you how cool these line up. <laughs> I made eight like I could not stop. But we're gonna make it's probably not all gonna fit in the camera. I'm trying to get it in the camera here. How fun is this with all of the oh so ombre so cool <laughs> i love the way that looks it's the little things that please me as a paper crafter <laughs> so i made eight of these and all the different patterns just kind of flipping and flopping the circle pattern versus the smooth pattern and the sentiments i use green granny apple green blackberry bliss rococo rose bermuda bay so lots of fun there i will definitely take a picture of that um, is the putty empty when the tip is screwed all the way tight? You know, Cindy, that is a good question. I haven't used up my putty yet, um, but I think that's the case. If you can't screw it um, in anymore and no more putty is coming out, you probably need to get um, a new putty refill. And you can buy just the refills for that. All right, get these out of the way. Hopefully my bow is dried. All right, so. That is the 3D project. Again, I recommend using the, I think, which one of these had? I was going to show you the difference in thickness. These all, I only had a few of the ones without filling. Okay, so this one, I think, is one without filling. This is just that dark chocolate one. And that is just a little bit thinner. Let me show you the difference here. The ones with filling are just a little bit thicker. See that? So it does make a difference. I did try scoring this to, instead of a quarter of an inch difference, to three eighths, and it just didn't close as nicely. So I recommend just the quarter of an inch top here. And it works with the thicker one. You can just see it's bulging just a little bit. Okay, super fun. I will definitely be making more of those and have these ready for my my mailman, my UPS driver. <laughs> All right, so this is three versions of a quick and easy card using the A Touch of Ink stamp set. What I love about this stamp set I mentioned are the versatility of the sentiments, but then you've got this great watercolor 
and line art images that make it so easy to make cards. And you might not be able to see the detail too easily, but I've got different layers here. I've got a thick basic white card base, but I've got two layers of, it's hard to catch it with the light there, just gives it a really classic look, but see how different whether you use, you know, depending on which colors, I opted for sort of a monochromatic. This is Rococo Rose. Now this one you might notice, I tried using um, Rich Razzleberry because I know that the Blackberry Bliss is really, um, a really bold color, but you can tell there's a little bit of a difference in the hue there. So if I were to redo this one, I would do that with Blackberry Bliss. And then this one is actually Granny Apple Green, which is a really bright green, but if you stamp it off, which I've done on all three of these, you get that really pretty leaf green color there. So we are gonna make a fourth one, but this one we're gonna make with the Hummingbird. And I'm gonna show you really quickly how I set this up on the Stamparatus to set yourself up for making multiples. Where's my Stamparatus? <laughs> all right, so this is what I had it set up for the flower version. So I'm gonna take, I've got a couple of extra of these plates, but you get two plates with the Stamparatus. This is one of my absolute favorite tools. I'm gonna grab, I thought I brought an extra, oh I did, I just can't see it. So I've got a clean plate here. Sounds like I'm saying clean plate club. And I've got, this is the grid paper for the Stamparatus. It's perfect fit for, I just kind of rotate it because I use this for stamping off. So I'm gonna start with my first piece of basic white. This measures my favorite measurement, but three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And I'm gonna put that in this upper right corner. Then stamp set wise, we're gonna do, this awesome hummingbird. Pull that off. I haven't even inked up the hummingbird yet, so we're gonna do this one on the fly. Doing the hummingbird and then the watercolor hummingbird. Grabbing both of those. I'm really using, so far I've used all but five of the stamp sets. And then I'm gonna clean off. This is my other favorite tool is the stamp and scrub. I cannot live without this. We're gonna clean off our stamp set because I'm gonna stamp that in black. And this was done, this was stamped in Bermuda Bay. We're gonna use that thank you so much. Making sure my stamp didn't stick to my stamp and scrub. All right. I'm gonna just put this, let's see. We may do this one a little bit opposite. I'm gonna save the watercolor wash. And I actually need to come in with, I've got a strip of Bermuda Bay that measures one inch by three and five eighths inch. You can decide whichever way you want the ombre to go. But I'm just gonna kind of eyeball. How do you clean the stamp and scrub? Epi, that is a great question. I um, use dish soap and my sink. So I just put a little bit of dish soap on the stamp and scrub. I leave the scrub in. Some people take it out. I just leave it right in the stamp and scrub, the scrubby mats. And I, with my fingernails, kind of like shampooing my hair, I do the same thing to my stamp and scrub and then rinse until the water is clear. And then I um, put it up like a sandwich board on top of a dish towel and let it dry overnight. So I try to do that fairly often you can tell when your stamps get pretty um when they start to have a little bit of kind of a pink residue on them because you still got some ink residue left behind so i'm just eyeballing with this one inch paper this one inch strip because i want to know where i'm going to put my sentiment i think we're going to do this one off to the left I don't tip, I do sometimes, Marlene. I typically use the magnets when, I'm, when I've done a die, cut temp, a die cut template. So to hold the template in place, I use the magnets. But typically for this, I'm, I'm a quick, sometimes lazy stamper. <laughs> Both of these images I'm gonna stamp in the same color. So I'm gonna pick those up on the same side of the paper. Oh, see, I do have a little bit of residue there. Maybe you can see that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna stamp. 
Now with my magnets, I've got them wrapped with duct tape. So I've got a handle. You do not want those to um, bang up next to each other. So I always keep them separate, but I've got them wrapped with um, colorful mermaid duct tape. <laughs> because why not? Makes me happy. All right, so I'm gonna ink this up with Memento ink. And the great thing about the Stamparatus too with this, especially with the black ink, is if for some reason I don't like the ink coverage when I stamp it the first time, I'll stamp it a second time. So we can do both of those at the same time. I'm curious how many of you guys have a Chucky, I think is what it's called. The, there's these handmade devices that people are making out of um, glass jar handles to press even pressure on the Stamparatus, but I'm curious if you guys have those. That actually looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna flip this one. This is what I love about the Stamparatus. I'm gonna flip it and then I'm gonna line up our watercolor here. Now it is not perfectly going to line up purposefully. It's gonna go outside of the lines. And I'm a-okay with that. So I'm lining that up. We're gonna have a Bermuda Bay hummingbird today. Okay, now, don't forget, pull this away because we're gonna stamp off really quick. Grabbing my Bermuda Bay, inking up. Let's close this before I make a mess. We're gonna stamp this down. So we're stamping off with the Stamparatus. I'm gonna come in. You are gonna get a little bit of ink on the back of your card, but nobody's gonna see it. And there is that beautiful watercolor wash. Super easy with a stamp set, okay? Now, this is set up that I can make a whole bunch of these cards over and over again by just flipping and inking up with my black, flipping and inking up with my Bermuda Bay, okay? Over time, as you're stamping off, this will get saturated with ink, so you'll just wanna keep rotating and replacing the grid paper as needed. You can use any type of scrap paper too. I just love that this has grid on it. Okay. So now let's start to assemble. I'm going to grab liquid glue. And we're going to put that one inch strip again, one inch by three and five eighths right to the bottom. And if you have any raised edges from trimming with your paper trimmer, just come in with the bone folder and smooth those out. Then I'm going to come in with our trusty white baker's twine from the snail mail suite. It's the snail mail combo pack. Grab your reverse tweezers to use as your third hand. Now I'm going to put this bow off to the right. You know what, Denise, that's a great question. For me, because I stamped the outline in black, it's easier for me to see where I'm putting the watercolor wash after I've stamped the black. I actually did when I was doing the samples, stamped it the other way, and it made it harder for me to line up the line art on the watercolor wash. Good question. So I'm just tying a bow here. You get, ooh, I think it's 50 sheets of the grid paper, Dina, and don't be ashamed to use that grid paper until you can't see the white anymore. <laughs> so use the heck out of those sheets before you get a clean one, and that it'll, they will last really long for you. I'm just judging my bow here because it's being finicky. There we go. Okay, bring down the tails. I bring them down and then trim so they're both the same length. If you wanted to, you could glue that knot down again using that fine tip glue pen, but I'm actually gonna show you a trick with the dimensionals on the back. Now I've got a piece of the thick basic white that I cut to four and a quarter by 11 and I scored it at five and a half in the center. I'm doing a portrait fold with a top, a top fold portrait card, but it, you can obviously flip this if you wanna have it be a side fold. I'm just gonna burnish. Again, I scored on this side, creating a valley, and I'm turning that valley score line into a mountain. 
I've got another piece of basic white. This is the regular weight, not the thick. And this is three and three quarters by five. I'm gonna liquid glue that down to the base. Liquid glue is my jam because I can slide things into place, especially layers. I'm just making sure that I've got equidistant space all the way around. I do feel a bit of a raised edge here, so I'm going to come in with my bone folder and smooth that down. Okay, so that's glued to the base. Now this we're going to adhere with dimensionals. I just had. <laughs> I tend to toss things and then pile things on top of it. So we're going to do six dimensional. See how we've got that a little bit of the hummingbird on the back. But no one will see that. That's from stamping off. This one I'm going to actually apply right over that baker's twine. So that's going to hold that bow there for us. You can add more dimensionals if you like. Then this I will pop up. Only about a sixteenth of an inch border. It's probably difficult for you to see on the camera. Now this is a really clean and simple layout. You can certainly add the floral image to this as well. I'm going to grab a rhinestone. It's my favorite bling. And we're just going to put a little rhinestone right there. So let me show you the versatility with this stamp set. We've got our Bermuda Bay Rococo Rose, Blackberry Bliss, although I used Rich Razzleberry, and Granny Apple Green, showcasing that Oso oh Ombre Designer Series paper. A little bit of different layouts, but you could add these to your stash so easy, easily, building up your stash using the Stamparatus if you like, and this beautiful Oso oh Ombre Designer Series paper, free with a $50 purchase now through Sunday the 28th, and then a touch of ink, which is free with a $100 purchase. So those are tonight's projects. These sort of coordinate in that we're using the same paper and the same stamp set. I've got these all here. Let's do it like this. How's that? <laughs> so that's tonight's projects. Let's jump into last week's prize patrol winners. Oh, I have a question. You do not need more postage when ma mailing, Terry. Great question. Here is my, my tip for um, mailing things that you've got a little bit of a rigid thing on, like the rhinestone. I keep a whole stash of the backings of our designer series paper. I cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. If you're strategic in how you cut, you can get four out of a 12 by 12 backing of DSP or designer series paper and two of the note card backings. And I would just take one of those, place it over my card and then slip it into the envelope. This weighs less than an ounce. So in the US it is, I forget what the stamps are now because I pay the commercial rate 60 cents, something around that. But this, now that rhinestone is not creating a really rigid thing and it will still go through the machine. So. Um, you can also use a piece of cardstock. I know people get fancy with cardstock and dry embossing it, but I have a whole bunch of this, so why not use it and recycle it? And it just protects the card in the mail. Great question. All right, so drum, well, drum roll the winners from last week. Congratulations to Sue Winterstein and Deb Johnson. Congratulations. Let me get back to my mouse here. To claim your prize patrol, this is for the winners. Just go to thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol and claim your prize patrol there. Congratulations, Sue and Deb. This is the wonderful as you stamp set. Congratulations and thanks for tuning in last week. Tonight's prize patrol is the Circle Celebration stamp set. I love this one because you can pair it with a sentiment from any other stamp set do some really fun things with these images. So two lucky winners for Circle Celebration. To enter to win, this is for US residents only. I only ship within the US, I'm sorry about that. You want to leave hashtag prize patrol 
in the comments so my YouTube watchers don't leave that in the live chat. You want to leave hashtag prize patrol in the comments of the video. That's a little bit of a different spot than you're in right now. And Facebook viewers, you know, just leave a comment, hashtag prize patrol. I will choose winners between now, well, I will choose winners next Wednesday. So my replay watchers also have a chance to win. Make sure that you are commenting on the right video. I have a lot of people commenting on my pre recorded videos. Make sure it's on the live or the live replay. And don't forget, no spaces. Make sure there's the hashtag, hashtag prize patrol. So let's see. I'm going to go back. I know it's all hashtag prize patrol comments. <laughs> um, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. I think you got the spiel there with prize patrol. I will announce winners next week. I can hope I got to go back to my brand and turn that off. There we go. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Remember, it is the last five days of celebration. If you have any questions or you have any challenges putting in your orders between now and then, just reach out to me. I will be live next Wednesday. I'm live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope you'll join me again next week. Come visit me at thepaperpixie.com. I try to post projects every weekday to inspire you. You can subscribe if you don't want to miss a thing and you'll receive my blog updates via email. There's a subscription box in the right sidebar. And what else can I tell you? Um, the cards will post to my blog in tomorrow's blog post with all the measurements and the supplies I used. And the diaper fold treat holder, sounds weird calling it a diaper fold, but that's what it is. That uh, shortened YouTube tutorial will post on Friday as well as the blog post. I didn't have a template because um, I may come up with a template just so you can see what the folds look like. But I'll, that will post to my blog on Friday's post. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week and a happy end of February going into March. I love March because it's my birthday month. <laughs> so have a wonderful and blessed week and I will see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.